Romeo. I'm here to show you how to refinish a tabletop. Um, I'm going to actually be re redoing the entire table here. Uh, I'll be restaining the top finish, uh, which currently is a nice dark brown, but in my new place for this table, it needs to be a lighter color. I'll be refinishing the table legs, which currently are iron, and so I'll spray paint those. And then I have a bottom here, uh, which is a woven kind of wicker look. Um, and I'll be going ahead and restaining that and maybe faux finishing the top to give it a nice lighter color. So, what do we need to get started? You'll see I'm dressed in uh, old clothing. Um, I have uh, two different kinds of sandpaper for my uh, little mouse sander. Uh, I have an 80 grit paper that I start out with, which really is the coarse paper, the heavy duty paper that gets through the polyurethane down to the bare wood. And then I have a 120 grit paper that I'll finish up with uh, prior to staining. And that really is just to keep the surface nice and smooth so that the stain goes on a little bit more evenly. Um, from that point, I'm covering my hair uh, because I don't want sand uh, dust all over my hair. And then I have a dust mask, um, which is the most important thing. You don't want to be breathing in this stuff as you're going along. You know, who knows what chemicals are in here. So that's really all you need for this portion of uh, the uh, project. I'm zeroing in on this portion, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on. It's a little bit loud, but you'll see how quickly uh, this, this tool takes this finish right down to bare wood. some of the nice character that was in the woods, some dents and things. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a hammer and some other tools and kind of bang this up a little. So I have a hammer. I have some small wire chain. 
I have a screw, long screw, maybe two, two and a half inches, and then I have a brick set. Um, so I'm going to use all these tools to try to uh, get some character into this wood. Um, I'm looking at using just the corner of this brick set, and the nice thing is, like, you know, I've got a nice surface to work the hammer in, and just kind of make dents here and there, so that you kind of get the same uh, consistent pattern going all the way over the tabletop. So I'm just going to kind of do it here and there, and try to get this looking really weathered and nice. set it down and see if I can get some of those ridges to show up. Oh, that looks great. And again, uh, I think the important thing here is to try to keep these, uh, whatever you're doing, um, at the same angle all the way through the project. Instead of taking your screw and, and putting it down this way and then turning it this way and that way, I think it's going to look a lot nicer uh, if you try to keep this pattern moving in the same direction. staining. So I make sure I have some kind of protection on my hands because I, I tend to get it more on myself uh, than I probably should. Uh, I have one of these really nice disposable brushes and I have some stain left over from my deck project and uh, I don't know if you can see it but it's a, it's like a nice dark brown. Um, it's a semi-transparent stain. I couldn't possibly tell you what color it is because I had them mix it seven times until I got the right tone that I was looking for. Um, beyond that, uh, you need a rag, a wet rag. Um, you wet it and then you wring it out as, as good as you can, uh, making sure that it's just damp at this point. So my process is going to be to um, just drag the stain over the top and then go over it with a wet rag so that I can get uh, exactly the look I'm going for. Um, and if the semi-transparent stain looks nice uh, without being wiped, then I'll just go ahead and leave it. So let's get started and see how it goes. So um, you really want to dredge this with stain to get down into those little divots that you made, uh, you know, with the screw and, and that kind of thing. Um, you really kind of have to push it into those spots. So, um, you know, I'm not, it's not really awful having it not white. Uh, the semi-transparent is showing the wood grain through the stain, um, but I think I am still going to wipe it. I think it'll be a little bit more attractive uh, to have a little bit more stain Fly. wiped off. So here goes with the rag. Yeah, I like this a lot better. Um, what it winds up doing is leaving some more stain here and there. And hopefully you can kind of see how that's turning out. Let's try one more. Okay, now go ahead and wipe it off. Oh, it's, it's really nice and rustic. I really like it. The top is done, and so I'm just going to try uh, something with this wicker on the bottom and see if I can change this color just a little bit to get it to go from more of a brown to a brown gray. So you'll see uh, with everything finished, the semi-transparent stain picks up in some areas and other areas it doesn't. So I have some of the natural color bleeding through to the top. Um, quite honestly, it, it looks like driftwood. It's really pretty. Um, but at the, on the other hand, uh, it doesn't look like much because with this semi-transparent deck stain, uh, you, you really do get a dull surface out of it. And furniture 
you know, it's always finished with a polyurethane coating. When I put the polyurethane coating over the top of this, that's what's going to make this pop and really come to life. Uh, you don't quite notice much of the distressing that I did at this point, and you really will when the polyurethane gets on there because it's going to make the, the light catch in a certain way that will make those little areas pop. So I'm really excited to uh, let this dry overnight and get going again tomorrow and get a couple of coats of polyurethane on it. And then by tomorrow night, I can actually be using this piece. Uh, the polyurethane dries really quickly. I brought the piece outside because I'm going to be using polyurethane that's oil-based. And the odor is a little too much to uh, apply this indoors with the window shut. Uh, so. I have a nice sponge brush here. Uh, it's one of the larger sizes. And basically what I'm going to do is try to keep a nice wet edge as I go along. At, when you're dealing with a long length, you want to be sure to do one long length at a time and then repeat it right next to it. So as I go, um, I have stirred this, not shaken it, getting everything up from the bottom. Uh, it's a satin finish polyurethane. Um, I really like the satin finish. I think that uh, when you're using polyurethane, uh, it's nice to have a finish in the end that's not going to be too shiny. Um, if it's too shiny, it winds up looking cheap, I think. And so uh, this satin finish is just perfect. It gives it a nice protective coat uh, without having that intense sheen. Uh, so it's just gonna dry really, really well. So as I go along here, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to do this uh, all along the length and then go next to it all along the length, um, making sure that I hit each and every square foot of the tabletop. One consideration is when you're using a sponge brush, it tends to leave bubbles in the surface. So as you go over this piece back and forth and not too many times, just try to make sure you get out as many of those tiny bubbles as you can. It'll make for a, a better looking piece in the long run. And also, um, I'm, I'm actually polyurethaning on top of pine. Now pine is very soft wood, so this is going to absorb into the wood a little quicker than it would if you were maybe staining an oak or a maple. Um, another a way to, around that is to use a wood conditioner before you actually start staining, which I didn't do uh, because I wanted it to look rustic. But if you want your stain to be more even, make sure you use a wood conditioner on that softer wood uh, before you stain it. I'm going to go ahead and start painting the legs. Uh, I have this color, it's called Flat Burnished Amber, and the Flat Burnished Amber is actually going to be a little bit dark for what I need, so I'm going to do some dry brushing on top of this once it's done. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead, the piece is still a little bit wet, and I'll just cover it with a piece of cardboard and go along. It's not changing it all that much, it's just taking away some of the... Um, darker orange color that's in here. While I'm waiting for coat number four to dry uh, of the polyurethane on the top, I thought I'd just bring out um, some wood conditioner. This is what I was talking about earlier. And the wood conditioner is a liquid, uh, more like a watery kind of uh, consistency. And this happens to be an oil base. So with an oil base uh, product, you use a natural bristle brush. Um, if you want to have a nice even finish with your stain so that it remains consistent through the whole project, you'll put this on before you actually stain it. Um, in my case, what I should have really done looking back on it is I stained it because I wanted a more rustic, uneven look uh, with the stain penetrating and then in some areas and not in others. Um, I would have stained it and then I would have put the wood conditioner on which would have saved me uh, probably three coats of polyurethane. And I'm imagining, um, this is coat number four, so I'm imagining coat number five is what I'm going to need where I'll get a nice, even, consistent finish with the polyurethane. Um, and making sure that I've sanded very lightly in between coats so that the, the following coat will adhere nice, uh, nicely to the previous coat. So that's just a tip for you, um, and that was my mistake, so hopefully I'll save you a little bit of trouble with your project. I'm moving on to faux finishing the wicker along the bottom, and I want it to kind of match the top a little bit better. It's a little bit dark. 
Um, if you remember, I went ahead and I put some stain over the existing color that was here, which was dark brown. Um, but what I really want to do is bring out a lot more of this golden color that's underneath. It's the natural color of the pine. So um, I'm doing this with just some simple uh, little craft paints. Um, I have a color called, um, what is it called? It's called taupe. I have another color, uh, it's called um, caramel candy. And then I have another color called marigold. And the marigold really brings out that golden color, but it might just be a little bit too gold. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I have this disposable palette pad and I'm just going to squeeze it onto this. You can use a plate if you'd like. Um, and this is really like a dry brush technique, only I'm kind of calling it a, a damp brush because um, I, don't, I don't just use the paint. I want to use water as a vehicle to kind of uh, water this down. So basically, uh, I have my natural bristle brush. I really like this because the ends of it uh, look like uh, kind of feathery, and that'll really make a nice uneven finish um, for the paint to go on top of this. So I'm just going to kind of mix these together and see what color I come up with. Um, you'll see it's really, really golden. So I'll just take the caramel color and try to uh, just knock it down a little bit. And um, you know, this is really just my technique for uh, mixing any one of these colors um, when I'm doing any kind of faux finish. So you'll see I could just kind of leave it up here and see oh you know that's that looks pretty good um, i'm just going to add a little bit more taupe to it to kind of knock it down one more notch and mix it all together and you'll see hey that's pretty close so by the time i get the water in there onto my brush now you'll see i'm just dipping it ever so slightly and I'm just going to dab it a little bit. All right, so here's my technique. I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, like I said, um, if you've ever watched any of my other faux finishing projects, really um, the key to getting this to look really neat is to keep everything going in the same direction when you're using a brush. Um, if you're using a sponge, it's a free-for-all, but when you're using a brush, you really do need to keep things kind of going in the same direction. So I'm keeping everything on a 45. You'll see I'm just gonna brush over it. And the nice thing is this, uh, this kind of um, oh, natural product that they use here, it, it's got a twist in it and it's adhering really well to the twist. So you can see how nicely it's kind of popping the color and really bringing out what's going on up top. Here's a close-up of the finished product. I have it out on our outdoor porch, and you'll see what a beautiful finish that tabletop got. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, so there's a reflection of anything that you have placed on top of that surface. So if I zoom out, um, you can also see that uh, it blends in so perfectly with this space. I've got a lot of uh, taupes and grays in this area, and so the dark brown just didn't do it. I, it kind of stuck out a little bit too much. Um, and I needed something to put uh, our old school entertainment center on uh, so we can enjoy some music out here. So the, the lights didn't require any faux finishing, and the faux finishing that I did on the wicker just makes everything blend and kind of go away into the background. I don't want this piece to stick out necessarily in this space. Um, it's just doing a, a really good job of doing some double duty for me. I holding some lighting and, and music and some candles. So uh, I hope that you have learned something from this that uh, refinishing wood isn't a difficult project um, and it's not all that time consuming if you follow the right steps. Uh, so if you have a project like this that you'd like to attack, I hope I've made it look a little easier for you. And until next time, this is Renee Romeo and thank you so much for watching.